Hello, fellas. Welcome back to Top 5 Choices. This is Haley from Top 5 Choices, and I hope you all are doing good. In today's video, I am going to do a detailed review and pick the Top 5 Best Steering Wheel, 2022. After doing proper researches, we came to the conclusion that meets the best in terms of overall. Kindly leave a like if you find this helpful, and I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and turn on post notifications if you haven't. We will be also providing affiliates link to purchase from Amazon. Kindly use it for best offers and purchase from anywhere in the world. We'll be back with more videos. A force feedback wheel is a step up from the standard gaming racing wheel in that it doesn't just turn, but it pushes back against you. It simulates the feedback you get in a real car, where you can feel the grip of your tires going or the back end of the car sliding round. All the clever mechanics used to offer such realistic feedback bump up the price, so that even this relatively entry-level model is still a fairly hefty investment. In contrast, non-force feedback wheels can be picked up for 50 pounds or so. This particular model is only compatible with PC and Xbox One. Thrustmaster also produces a line for PlayStation slash PC models too, such as the Thrustmaster T300RS. The Thrustmaster TMX uses the company's hybrid belt and gear force feedback engine. This sits somewhere between the smoother, more premium feel of pure belt-driven models and the more stepped feel of a pure gear system. Crucially, this combination eliminates the central dead spot seen with pure gear-based mechanisms. This mechanism is combined with a 12-bit sensor setup that can differentiate up to 4,096 steps in the wheel's position. Meanwhile, the pedals use a 10-bit system for 1,024 levels of pressure sensing. The result is an impressively realistic response, if not quite the level of detail you'd get from Thrustmaster's higher-end systems. Rumble over curbs, get into a tank slapper, or actually take a corner correctly, and the wheel provides a very good approximation of the sensation you'd expect. It's a testament to the effectiveness of the wheel that when playing project cars, for example, I was struggling to get the feedback I was expecting with default settings, and regularly came in last. However, diving into the game settings and cranking up the steering sensitivity and force feedback level from 50 to 100 resulted in the game coming alive. the Logitech G923 True Force Racing Wheel and found it to offer a desirable mixture of control, feedback, and response. For that reason, it is decently suited to most racing games out there, it's the racing wheel we'd recommend to rookie drivers and those looking for thrills and find themselves often hopping between different and varied sims. We spent most of our time using the G923 with F1 2021 and F1 2019, and it works excellently with only a few tweaks to steering saturation and throttle linearity. 72. 20, if you're wondering. Similarly, it's as simple as booting a Seto Corsa Competizion to switch to GT Series Racing. Or any other driving game for that matter, even SnowRunner, the G923 relies on a gear-driven motor to feed the force feedback, which is enjoyable in use, but a little less powerful and accurate feeling than those bell-driven or direct-driven designs above. The best bit about the G923 package is that it's more than a racing wheel and wheelbase. It's a set of three pedals, two, and excellent ones at that. I was pretty taken aback at the quality of these pedals the first time I used them, they have all the makings of higher-end pedals where it counts, the accelerator delivers a decent linear press with a quick return to keep it glued to your foot, while the clutch brings a similarly swift response with increasing tension as you depress the pedal, enough to create a faux bite point. The brake pedal, however, is the highlight of the three. Slightly tweaked from the G920 and G29 design, a progressive spring design requires serious stomp power. So much so that the unit's carpet grip system is something of a necessity for serious racing, and you'll want to consider a chair with lockable casters to keep you firmly in place and gunning for position in game. The G923 enjoys wide support and high quality construction, and it certainly trumps the Thrustmaster kit for how premium it feels. The G920 is a similar wheel and available for a lot less money nowadays, so that's also worth checking out if it's available for less in your area. The Thrustmaster T300RS sat as our number one pick for the best racing wheel for a few years. It's a little older now, having originally been released in 2014, but it's still plenty deserving of consideration in 2022. The T300RS has aged better than a lot of modern tech, with mods and support aplenty, though with the arrival of the T248, we felt it hit a cheaper price point that would appeal to a wider audience than the standard T300RS. The T248 also comes with a, a far superior pedal set in the T3PM. That's why we've updated our recommendation to the T300RS GT Edition, which has all the best bits of the T300RS plus an improved 3-pedal set, 
T3PA that makes it sing. You'll have to drop a little more cash on the T300RS GT edition, but we felt the T3PA pedals make that leap more worthwhile. They're still not quite up to the T3PM set on the T248, but they're a much improved set than on the T300RS as standard, which also lacks a clutch pedal, but you'd also be buying a dual belt-driven design for highly responsive force feedback on the T300RS that remains impressive to this day. It delivers smooth response from the track with the benefits of the extra power that only a belt drive system can deliver in lieu of a bigger motor. The wheel on the T300RS can also be removed and replaced, which isn't something you can do on the T248. It's a pretty close call between this and the newer Thrustmaster T248. There's a good case to be made either way, but we recommend you splash out for the T300RS GT edition if you want something akin to the best of both. The Thrustmaster T248 is a far more budget-friendly option than the Fanatec GTDD, but it doesn't let up where it counts. The force feedback it delivers is a lot more impressive than you might expect, and it's exceptionally accurate. Inside the T248, you'll find a hybrid force feedback system that utilizes a gear alongside a belt. That covers the downsides of the geared system, which has been known to feel clunky at times, but still has all the benefits of a belt system. Plus, that keeps it cheap however, the T248's hybrid system has appeared to come at the expense of some of the finer touches. The build looks and feels cheap. Similarly, it's awfully loud, especially the shifter paddles. These are, however, incredibly responsive, like nothing I've used before. A worthy trade-off? So long as you don't need to keep the noise down too much, what Thrustmaster is delivering with the T248 is the Thrustmaster Hybrid Drive. It's not precisely gear or belt-driven, but there is a belt to maximize the internal motor's potential in-game. The hybrid drive feels like a smart move on Thrustmaster's behalf once you get this well set up, too, as compared to a purely gear-driven motor, there's a lot of power and response delivered through the wheel while racing. IT is a heavy-feeling wheel, though. You have to throw it around with some force to make a sharp corner at speed. That's both a blessing and a curse, if you don't have it set up right for a game like F1 2021 or some cars in Assetto Corsa, Competizione, where the wheel rotation is far from the maximum 1080 degrees offered, it can be quite a struggle to turn the T248 as needed. Though that's mostly easily rectified by spending a little more time in the settings menu, next to a direct drive unit like the Fanatec GTDD Pro, you're looking at a much weaker response in the T248, however. It can come across a little muted when you're throwing it around rocky terrain. Yet, there's not much more out there at this price that will appeal to more casual gamers and more experienced racers than the T248. The Fanatec GTDD Pro sets a high standard for all racing wheels. A direct drive motor can throw the wheel around with so much force you're holding on for dear life. Trust me, you want that. You feel every bump or loss of traction with the GTDD. I noticed my lap times started improving once I could hone in on where I was losing grip and speed during a lap. Granted, I had a few meetings with the barriers along the way, but I felt like I was able to develop my race as a result, the GTDD's construction is pretty much immaculate. The wheelbase is this solid metal, passively cooled monster, and into that slots a sturdy and straightforward clamp. The wheel itself is one of my favorite of all those I've tested, delivering a glutton of buttons that are easy to get familiar with. The included CSL pedals don't come with a clutch or a load cell brake. However, you can upgrade to a load cell kit sold by Fanatec, which replaces the brake and leaves the spare brake to become a clutch pedal, this wheelbase's feedback ensures you're painfully aware when you take a little too much curb and helps inform you of your traction throughout a corner. A fast rotation back to the center also means you can throw the wheel around and never feel like losing control over your steering in tight chicanes, when you set it up just right, the GTDD Pro sings. The finely tuned vibration and rotation through the wheel transmit so much information from the game's engine into your hands, with the right racing game, one that has simulation-grade feedback, it's an absolute joy to throw the GTDD around the track. While technically built for Gran Turismo 7, it's no worse off on the PC across a range of sim racing and sim-like games, such as Assetto Corsa and F1 2022.